Привет, друзья! Я рад приветствовать вас на канале Капитан Герман. И сегодня у нас будет интервью. И интервью с очень интересным человеком. Эрик Баухаус сделал Панама Cruising Guide. Это самый офигенный Cruising Guide, который я вообще когда-либо держал в руках. Давайте я вам сейчас объясню, почему. Откроем книжечку, и вы сами все поймете. То есть это лучший пайлот чарт, по которому можно ходить по территориальным водам Панамы. Но история еще интересна тем, что когда я делал первую кругосветку, я познакомился с дядечкой, уже пожилым дядечкой, с такой седой бородой. Он часто ко мне приезжал попить кофе. Мне с ним очень понравилось общаться, то есть реально клевый. Он рассказывал про острова в Панаме, про артефакты времен Колумба. В общем, общаться было с ним очень интересно. И потом оказалось, что это... Папа Эрика. Но Эрика я на тот момент не знал. Я у него э, купил книжечку и реально мне понравилось ходить по Панаме. И в этот раз, когда я прихожу в Панаму, в Марину заходит Эрик Баухаус, сын этого дядечки. Я, к сожалению, не помню, как зовут. Я у Эрика спрошу. И, естественно, я захотел взять интервью и узнать, как же он делает... Э, этот крутой гайд, как он меряет глубины, как вообще это все технически происходит. Ну что, поехали. Guys, I want to introduce you Eric, Eric Bauhaus, very famous author of Panama Cruising Guide. So, Eric, yeah. how are you doing? Uh, I'm fine and I hope you are fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, that's uh, Eric's book. Yes. Where, how, how it came to being? Yeah. And uh, yeah. from a zero to hero, like from a beginning, why you decide to exactly. be in Panama? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> it's not like I decided. I think most people that come to Panama don't really, de they come with the idea of crossing the canal and continuing and um, yes. and then people get stuck. They find out it's much nicer than they thought and there's much more to it than just the canal. So, um, yeah, this was kind of my story here too. I came here originally with my parents um, and then we got stuck here. I started fixing an old boat and saying the San Blas. And there were no charts at all in some places, and we hit the reef quite often. You know, we oh, hit the reef yeah. really hard. And uh, it was actually quite stressful. You would be like, wow, you never know when the last moment would be. Luckily, we had a steel boat, otherwise we'd have lost it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, if you have a steel boat, you don't need charts. So. Yeah, well, <laughs> if you have a steel boat, and you're lucky, yeah. So I started doing the cruising guide, which is, uh, this is the fifth edition. Uh, there have been four previous ones. So the first one was much smaller and started doing the cartography. You know, like most, most people that do cruising guides, uh, they basically just write, okay, this is a nice place to anchor, but they, exactly, don't, exactly. But they don't produce the underlying charts. They will copy these from government uh, institutes. So in, in Panama, they have never made any charts. The government here has never made a single chart. Like, But which charts do you have? Is like open CPN or something like this? Uh, no, I actually made the charts from scratch. So you start with a blank paper, I mean with a blank computer, yeah. and start uh, surveying. So you go up and down with the boat. Yeah, I saw you have uh, this... Uh, the machine. big triangle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's hanging back there. I'll show you this triangle <laughs> for a survey. Uh, what, okay, what? Because I would like to see how it works. Sure, yeah, I mean, this is basically, I'm always trying to develop new ways of doing things, because usually, like a hydrographic office, you know, has a lot of people and a lot of resources. Well, I have to do it by myself, so you have to do it more efficiently and faster. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
do you do it with a dinghy? Uh, yeah, I do it with a boat, I do it with a dinghy, depending, I have a fast dinghy, you know, uh -huh. so you can go like 30 knots. And, and, and it, it works fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, it records sonar all the time, GPS, and then satellite images. If you look at, it's got a lot of aerial photos. But uh, a lot of these pictures were taken with a... Uh, helicopter. No, yeah, some were with a helicopter, but many were with a, a, a kite. It's like a, um, it's like an airfoil I, I made. Yeah. So it goes up on a long Dyneema line. So it goes four kilometers up, yeah, and has a rotating camera. Ah, so it takes okay. pictures every second, dang, 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 yeah. So then I can, after with software, you can flatten it out. So, and it can actually... I did not see it in the book. I, I saw only photos with a helicopter. Yeah, they often look like a helicopter, but like all these pictures are actually taken from, from the kite. Ah, really? Yeah, look, there's the boat. You see, there's the speedboat. Yes. And the kite's up here. Yeah. Cool. This one here, you see there the boat? Yes, yes. You yes. see it there? Yes, yes. And the it, kites up here. Ah, yeah. okay. <laughs> it's a long one. It, yeah, it four, works. four kilometers. Four kilometers. Yeah, and it, it works because when I started doing this book, there were no drones, right? So. Um, yes, yes. It, uh, yeah, and still today I prefer this to the drone because the drone it runs out of battery pretty soon. Like you, you can fly half an hour and that's it. Well, this thing you can leave it up all day. You can leave it up while you're surveying. You can have the. The rotating can camera. Can you get, get information from a drone it, it, immediately in or real time? You just real. Uh, I, I, I record, yeah. Ah, I okay. don't really. I, sometimes what I do, I do a first pass, where you get more or less an idea, and then second pass to get more more ah, detail. Okay, okay. Yeah, and it's I, a very complicated way. So you can so you can see it here. You see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see only any photo. It is uh, some uh, <laughs> photo of boats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, this is because the, it's back here. See, so I'm giving you all the, all the secrets. <laughs> So you can make the same if you want. Exactly. <laughs> but you will be fine because four kilometers drone. <laughs> Do it close to the airport. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then what you end up with is kind of like a, um, a digital uh, 3D model uh -huh. of the bottom. And so this is like intermediate step. And then from there you start, you make the actual chart. Yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, but uh, do you have a record uh, of depths? Yeah. Uh, like this. So exactly. it is a shape. Yeah. And a depth record. Yeah, it's a 3D mm -hmm. surface of the bottom. Uh huh. Yeah. Which so, uh, which software or which? There's different uh, ones. Uh, I actually used uh, one Russian one. The one a long time ago it was called 3DF. It's made by a Russian programmer. Uh -huh. And there's different softwares I've used uh, throughout different years. Okay, got it. And and then the the next thing is like the interpolation. I don't want to go into technical details here, but what happens a lot? Say you have one survey line here, one survey line here. And they would always, the shallower the water is, the harder it is to survey, to make charts. Uh, because okay. if the water, the, the sonar beam has an angle, let's say yes, exactly. 45 yeah, degrees. Like, yeah. yeah. So if you're in one meter water, you will only cover one meter width. If yes. you're in a thousand meter water, you will cover 1000 meter width. Okay, so you have uh, just narrow lines, yeah. if it is a shallow and you need to... Ex exactly, it becomes like much, much more difficult. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so often there's holes in the data, right? So then you have to interpolate. But I saw your charts is very detailed. It's very good because uh, all all charts which I uh, have right now, oh, on the I don't okay. have uh, so many details on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, because the people that make the the, con the map console, they they don't survey. They yes, just take the exactly. information that exists. And in this case, often information is 100 or 200 years old. Yeah, exactly. No. So what I saw, it is a just. It looks like open CPN. So I say, I, I think it's like you know <laughs> something, but maybe it is a, some uh, more details you get. Yeah. And uh, maybe add some details. But if it is a, from a blank page, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Often I start with a blank page. I mean, some areas the charts are good, like the Panama Canal. Obviously, it's good. No, Panama Canal, yes, because yeah. it's different. And then so you don't. They, they <laughs> dig it. You yeah. can see the surface without <laughs> yeah. the water. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And since we have it, like now it's, it's much easier to do. Like from this rock, I found years later, I didn't know this one exists. This is in the Pacific. Uh huh. So. Is it a small one? Yeah, you always find new, new stuff. Like, I actually had a story, it's a funny story. If you hit a rock using the Panama Cruising Guide, you will have your name of your boat for that rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lucky you. <laughs> you can be in a book. <laughs> 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 and I'll show you a uh, boat called Neko lost their rudder on a rock. And, uh, and its name. Uh, it's named Neko the Rock. <laughs> the Neko Rock. I'll show you. See here? Yeah. Neko Rudder Rock. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy, he hit. This was a, the rock I didn't find. Uh -huh. And he, he hit this and he said, Look, 
at least I hit the I hit the rock with your chart. Now at least I want to um, have my name on the chart. Yeah. So I said, okay, next but edition you have the name. Why he decided to pass here? Yeah, I, this I was been, very I've been here, so I just do it. Uh, of course, me too. That was very like, foolish to go so close. Yes, because yeah. it's too shallow. It is a two part and yeah. two reefs. Yeah, yeah, very, very foolish. Why? Yeah, but yeah. okay, is a good way to have uh, your <laughs> name in a book. <laughs> uh, from a beginning uh, until you get a, your first uh, uh -huh. cruising guide. Yeah, yeah. How many? Ah, uh, maybe days? maybe one year. One year. Yeah, yeah. But it, this was like a very basic one. Yeah, the first edition was, was didn't have many charts. I, uh, the charts were not good at all. It was like a regular cruising guide, like, you know. <laughs> yeah, worse. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have it? Uh, I don't have it here. I have a few copies still. No, no, just to look, maybe to yeah, take I, a few photos. No, I don't have it here. I have it. Fifth edition. Is exactly. the last one or you can uh, I hope it? it's not the last. Um, but for a present time. Oh, this is the most, this is the most recent one. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is the updated one. Because I have a fifth edition. Yeah, yeah, this is a good well. one, yeah. And uh, do you have Anything to add in a sixth edition? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I have new photos. I have some new charts. Um, I'm basically like at this point, I was just updating, you know. Yes, 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 okay. yes. So what, one thing I'm doing now, I'm working on an electronic version, because this is the paper version, and many people have a scanned copy version, you know, right, on the OpenCPN. Uh, I don't know, I don't use it, but you will tell me yeah. how to well, use Because I'm using just OpenCPN of this area, and mostly I am not use OpenCPN, it's like a second Okay, way but, but what, what, what charts do you have on it? Uh, Navionics, iSailor, and uh, Garmin. Okay, well a lot of people have scanned the book, and I probably shouldn't say this, but people have done this and copied it and, and used it on the CPM. Yeah? Ah, okay, they just add with uh, all the coordinates. Mm -hmm. exactly. exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So, I cannot guarantee how precise these are. They, they, they could be wrong because there's just no, people that. It's definitely wrong way because yeah. it's like. A, it's a piracy. Stealing. Yeah. 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 Just... But at the same time, I can understand people who want the electronic version because I use it electronically too. You know, they want to have this on their open CPN. But honestly, I would buy if you have a chart of yeah. Panama, which is yeah, yeah. possible to buy. I you would you do buy, yeah. yes, And it could be a good not? price. You know, it can be like $30, whatever. It doesn't have to be expensive. doesn't matter. Yeah. It's just not a question of price. You will have a perfect solution. Yeah, it can save you both, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. And um, so I'm, but the problem is some charts are really precise and others are a little less precise. So once people use it on the chart plotter, like what happened to the Neko guy, you know, uh -huh. he, they start going very close and, and they start assuming every chart has the same precision, you know? So for what I'm doing right now is getting all the charts up to a certain quality control to uh -huh. then release them electronically. Like I want to okay. get them all so up to the same use standard. It like, a, like a map. Yeah, exactly, on exactly the OpenCPN. Like, yeah. uh -huh, uh -huh. But before doing that, I could release them now, but I'm worried that people who have never been to Panama will end up having accidents because they will, the charts don't all have the, they all look the same, but they don't all have the same level of precision. They're all much more precise than the, than the, than the government ones. I mean, the, but no, they're no, still different, yeah, but yeah. there's still little differences in precision. So I would like to get them all up to a similar standard b before releasing them electronically, yeah. So you have uh, <laughs> one person who is going to buy this chart. So. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hopefully more than one. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> okay, so, um, now it is a final final book like this one yeah, yeah. and the sixth one will be an electronic or it will be paper and electronic yeah no paper and electronic okay good yeah because for me uh, uh i'm a man who using only electronics charts mm -hmm. i never use any paper charts because i don't like it yeah. but uh when i was cruising here in panama yeah. i'm all the time using book yeah yeah and uh, sometimes it's very difficult to match, you know, where I'm... Ah, your book. overview. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah. yes. yes. Uh, so, I agree. And, but it's a good one, but uh, it's yeah. difficult to use because it is uh, so many details here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you... Yeah, yeah. It's too, too, the, the, know, the thing too is, with, with paper, I mean, this book has, I think, yeah, 550 pages. So... It, but still, you have a, you, you run out of paper space. Now you can either give detail or you can give overview, right? Yes, exactly. So usually, yes, I, yes. I think okay, you can get the government general chart to get a general overview, and then I use the space I have to give it the much more detail you have, right? Like, yeah, yeah. If it's electronic, <laughs> no, I went in the paper. Why yeah. it doesn't work? <laughs> you need to reload. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's nice to be electronic. You don't have this limitation. What? You can go full detail and full overview uh, as you like it. Yeah. How many years do you spend in Panama already? 
Oh, uh, wow. I mean, almost 20, I think. Yeah. Well, for not continuously, but... Yeah. No, no, no. I mean, yeah. for the present time. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, this fifth edition, it's a result of 20 years... Uh, yeah, efforts. for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's hardcore. Job. Yeah, it's a lot of work, yeah. <laughs> Did you think to move from Panama to different places? And why you decide to stay? Well, uh, as I say, again, it's not like really a decision. It's more like you stay here. But I mean, for now, when, when it started and you, when you're making decision, yes, I, I, I agree. Yeah, so yeah. you do some, some task and lose yeah, yeah. time. But in some period of time, you could say like, okay, I want, I give up to live here. I want to go some, uh, some different yeah. place. And, uh, I mean, I'm a kite surfer. You know, I like kite surfing a lot. My wife, she's a kite surfing oh, yeah? instructor. Yeah. Oh, cool. We can go. Kite no, it's it's windy. Well. Let's go. No kite. <laughs> you have no kite? Uh, four boards and uh, one surfboard. Okay. For a kite surfing, you, by the way, if you want, you can borrow. Yeah. yeah no, I've got all the stuff. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we had a quite old kites, and we presented in Martinique to okay. so our friend. Yeah. And we have now only one six square meter uh, because it's quite new. Yeah. Yeah. Core. Yeah, but the rest we don't use. I, I think uh, the one thing that's missing in Panama is the strong wind. You know, I like strong wind. So, I mean, places we could potentially go maybe Canary Islands. I like them. It's, uh -huh. it's a very nice place. Um, but Panama has a lot of things going for it. It's very small, which I like. It has the two oceans. Panama, it has the Atlantic, the Pacific, um, mountains, rivers. You know. No, it is a very big uh, yeah. diversity. Actually. Very diverse and a very small space. So I like that, yeah. and it's got good connections, you know, to flights and everything. To fly to US, to yeah. fly to yeah. Europe. It, it used just to. Yeah. So, no, right now, even right now. Yeah, yeah, even right now you can fly. Yeah. I think all these passports, if you think, if you look at history, like before, this used to not exist. You used to be able to travel from all around the world. Like 500 years ago, you could travel all around the world, and people would not harass you. Like yes, unless you have a guns in your uh, no. ship. You yeah, know? well, some people still have guns in their ship. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I think uh, if you were you come to a foreign land and you were a, a nice person, then there would be no problems. If you become a bad person and people have problems with you and you make problems, well then okay. You know. But uh, honestly, I cannot say that there is any problem around the world with the passport. Only French Polynesia we need to have a visa to get. Yeah. And uh, maybe in a few places, but the rest it's possible to travel. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, right now. It's changed because of COVID. Uh. <laughs> Tell me about your family. You have a big family. Ah, yeah, you can hear them, right? Can you do more kraft machen, kids? Can you do more kraft machen? Yeah. So, uh, my parents. Uh -huh. my story. Yeah. Well, I, I was born on a boat actually, uh -huh. in in Greece. Um, you know, a long time ago. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, 40 something. <laughs> yeah, a long time ago, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, we sailed to the Middle East. We sailed um, in, in Israel a lot. We spent a lot of time in Israel. Uh -huh. And in Turkey and Greece and the you know, East Mediterranean. And uh, we kind of, our plan was to go to India, to Goa. And then just before crossing the Suez Canal, we had a problem with the autopilot. And for some reason, then we started, we were always going, you know, east, you know, and then this time we started going west. And um, then we spent some time in Italy. My, my sister was born in Italy, in Elba, a very nice place. Elba, I've been in Elba. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. And then went, went to Elba, uh, France, spent some time in Italy, some more time, and then we went to uh, Spain. Spain was very nice. Yeah. I spent a few years. Yeah, very nice. I like it. And I put, an older sister, older brother, they both live in Mallorca. They have a diving business. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, from there we came to the Caribbean and yeah. You just, you change your plan and <laughs> instead of India, you decide to go to Caribbean. Uh, yeah, kind of, yeah. And then the plan like was to go to Polynesia, but then kind of got stuck here in Panama and yeah. So it's almost halfway to Polynesia. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> you cover it. <laughs> yeah, halfway. yeah, yeah. <laughs> done, halfway done. I like, to me, it's always like, uh, I think when you do something, like you have to have like kind of purpose. You know, like... You exactly, do, yeah. I agree. I Some agree. purpose, no? Yeah, like you what, just, what for I go there. Exactly, yeah. If you just go to say I've been, that's not enough. You know, there has to be some other purpose. And, and somehow, uh, Panama, there's a lot of things to be done. You know, and 
and Panama did some other stuff, did some real estate stuff and whatever. And there's always a lot of things to be done, you know? Yeah. Because it's still developing. Exactly. And yeah. it is a very, with a very good background. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so you can speak with the people in one language. I mean, yeah. not a language like a Spanish yeah, or yeah. English. I mean, people can understand you. What yeah. do you mean? Yeah. I, I think. For example, like in Panama, for anybody who comes here, I think there's a lot of opportunity. There's yeah. a lot of opportunity because a lot of p things are very, like you said, in Ukraine, it's some, some very inefficient, no? Yes. The work is very inefficient. And yes. here in Panama, I'm sure it's worse. Like it's maybe the world's most inefficient in many things. So it sounds bad, but at the same time, it's a great opportunity. Oh, it is an advantage. Yeah. Uh, if I would have. Advantage yeah, in exactly. some yeah. way. I've had friends, they started business here and they're all done very well, like usually, you know? But do you live on a boat or do you live in a... Uh, I have a house in Panama. Yeah. But yeah. mostly, uh, as I see, you spend all the time with yeah. the boat. So. Well, it depends on the, on the moment, you know. Like now with the Corona, you know, I spend a little more time here. And then I, I work in Panama on a, on a big catamaran and we go back and forth. And love I, I, or? They love both, actually. You know, for kids, um, it's for them, I think, good having both. They can be at home with the house and have their friends and they can be on the boat. It, it, for them, it's important to have other kids around. Uh huh. You know. But here in Marina, I yeah, there's a lot of kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then they, they uh, yeah, they have their friends, you know, which are their special kids they know, and yeah. But I think here in Marina to find friends is much easier yeah. because it many kids are all around. Yeah, exactly. But if you are in a city, you need to go in a special place. Yeah. Well, now that the place we live is very, it's a little town in the right by the Panama Canal. Uh huh. It's very nice. Like you can walk everywhere. Is yeah. it safe? Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. Because I know in Panama sometimes it's not really yeah. safe. Yeah. No, but this is like a little place. It's it's right by the Panama Canal dredging division, and it's basically only foreigners living there. Ah, okay. So it's it's, it's really nice, and uh, you, you can leave the house. Sometimes I leave go and leave the house open. Yeah. Sometimes it's possible <laughs> to do in Marina to leave your boat open as well. So no. no yeah, but that's gun. because there's this watchman with a gun, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hiding under cover, but still yeah, yeah. you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Eric, tell me about your project. What are you developing now? What are you doing now? Yeah, well, uh, can't talk about all of them. <laughs> <laughs> the kids' project. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think that one that's interesting for people. Maybe I'm developing an anchor like a, a new type of anchor it's really? a, yeah yeah it's a i i started as a kid i don't know if you're familiar with anchor types there's like uh the claw anchors there's the fisherman anchors there's lots of different types of anchors right yeah but now you know that's a rock the rock <laughs> <laughs> yeah the rock now the rock is a good anchor but it, it's uh, actually a copy of a previous uh yes, yes, development yes. which is the it's only market <laughs> The Bugel Anker, it's the original roll bar anchor, yep. was developed 1980s, early 1980s by Rolf Kacirek. And I actually met Rolf Kacirek in Turkey when he oh, was really? developing the original roll bar anchor. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The design actually comes from ice anchors in Poland. Yeah, so it's uh, okay. people that were anchoring and put the anchor in ice and snow in a very big fluke area. And the oh, normal okay. fisherman anchor would not work. So what he did then, he developed it with a roll bar, and he's the one that actually invented this whole roll bar concept. Yeah, because it's uh, turning yeah, upside exactly. down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I, a few times I tried to put it on upside yeah, down, but no way. It just definitely exactly, go in a yeah. proper position, and uh, after you get it in a ground. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think uh, one of the important um, design aspects of anchors is how much tip weight there is. So if you throw the anchor on the ground, I mean, first of all, of course, it has to turn into proper yes. position by itself. And then there's the tip, right? The flick that penetrates the ground. Yeah, it could be different angles. Different angles, exactly. Yeah. I think that's the most important. That's important, yeah. But what's also important is how much weight is on it. Like, how, what is the force pushing into the tip? Okay, yes. So when you throw the anchor, it will rest on three different points, right? On the shank, on the side, yes. and on the tip. Yes, exactly. So, for example, with CQR, CQR, right? CQR anchor, you know it? Yeah, yeah. so a CQR it was invented in uh, 1933. And it's uh, called Coastal Quick Release. That's what it stands uh, for. Coastal CQ. Quick Release. Yeah, ah, CQR. maybe I know. It is like a flapping. It's a flapping, yeah. Ah, okay. Yes, yeah, yes. Exactly. I'm using it in a dinghy. Yeah, yeah. The small one. And this used to be for decades, you know, from 1933, used to be always the standard anchor. <laughs> the thing is, that has a tip weight of about 10%. So if you have a 100 kilo anchor, you know, you're going to have 10 kilos pushing 
into the ground on the tip, right? Okay. Yeah. So then the next anchor, the, um, the bugle anchor, had like maybe 22 to 25% pressure on the tip. Uh -huh. The one that's developed by Rolf it's Kutcher. A weight, uh, distribution. Wide, yeah, 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 yeah. Distribution weight on it, yeah. And then uh, the rock knife is actually a little bit higher still. It's about 30%, uh -huh. 30% tip weight. And then the one I've developed has 52% tip oh, weight. Oh, it's extremely more efficient. Yeah, like it's okay. over half of the weight rests on the tip. Okay. So that means that, let's say with a 50 kilo anchor. Yeah, yeah, it is a You, you have 25 uh, kilos. So you would need a 250 kilo CQR so to get the same level of pressure. You need or smaller anchor or baton hole. Yeah, I, I, would, I would never recommend smaller anchor. It's just you're going to be have a more secure anchoring experience. A boat weighs, you know, maybe 50,000 pounds. And now you wonder whether you get that 30 pound or the 40 pound, the 10 pounds, you know, 0.001% of your boat weight. It makes no difference whether you have a 30 pound or 50 pound. Your boat performance is going to be exactly the same. Yes, yes, it makes yes. no difference, you know? Yeah. And, and, and it makes a lot of sense to have a bigger anchor, I think. In uh, so. my boat, I had a Delta from a factory. Oh, yeah. Delta, I don't like. It's yeah, it works pet. in sand, but not in weed. Uh, yeah. Only sand, but yeah. uh, weed, <laughs> rocks. It doesn't uh, work, yeah. Uh, it doesn't work at all. I know. And it was not only bad, but also uh, the weight of it was on a top limit of the boat. You know, mm, it's yeah. like a size less. Yeah, and, uh, bad. From my first year, I was so many troubles with it because I was... Uh, drifting, uh, right? Just yeah. drifting. Yeah, no, no. Uh, fortunately, I did not hit No, anybody. no, but, but because you were careful. Right? I could not sleep. Yeah. It was a nightmare. <laughs> of course, I bought a different anchor. Yeah. No, I, I think anchors are key. And, and I mean, I've been in the Caribbean and several hurricanes. And if you have the right anchors, you can take almost any wind. You know. And the other thing you could do with anchors, like the anchor I'm developing, it's designed to go uh, one behind each other, like yes, so you can yes. link them behind each other. We, call, we called it Tsuk. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So uh, you can do it with any anchor, but this anchor is specifically designed to work even better when you do that. So say you have a hurricane, you can... Um, you can in, uh, like chain another exactly. one yeah. and you yeah. will be more secure. Exactly, and you could have like... And it's also designed... The ones I have here are prototypes, but the, the final ones will be collapsible. Designed for manufacturing, uh, so it's cheap to manufacture. Uh -huh. For example, uh, the Rockner. The shank, yeah, it's made from um, high strength steel. Uh -huh. So, what they do to get more tip weight, to try to get more tip weight, they have made it thinner, the thinner. shank, yeah. and the fluke thicker. So, the part that's lying uh, on the ground is thicker, and, the, f and the, the, the shank, the long part, is thinner. To be able to make it thinner, you need to use high strength steel. Okay, yes, so because it could be bent. It could be bent, could, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, the high strength steel is much more expensive, maybe five times more expensive. And also, it's the high carbon content, so it rusts much faster. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. So, so now I hear it's a little bit yellow. It starts rusting, yeah. yeah. And uh, the other thing that can happen, like, Rockman had this problem. They, they had a, um, and the Chinese, they made in China, you know, and the Chinese, they started using normal steel. Instead uh -huh. of the high the expensive steel, they switched to the cheap so steel. it's just a problem of uh, quality control. And then it so bent. They had a lot of bent problems. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Before I, I never met uh, any problem with a bending because I yeah, yeah. live on a boat. So it's the first time when I stay in marina for many, many years. Yeah. So no, no, but this just happened for one moment. They then noticed and they ah, corrected okay. the problem. Ah, okay. So this Maybe is not something that didn't continue. They just had this flaw ah, for a while. Okay, okay. But yeah. they solved the problem. They've solved the problem, okay, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, while well, the anchor I'm designing, it's all made of regular steel, like mild steel. Uh -huh. So you, you get the strength out of the design, not by using high value materials. Okay, so it could yeah. be uh, with a better uh, uh, price value. Sh yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's designed for manufacturing. It also that you don't need uh, expensive forming processes to build it. Uh -huh. So you can use very simple tools to build it. Uh, you can build it fast. So uh, yeah. now you are working on project. You want to make an anchor, which will be good holding, better than, better, uh, better than any other ones. Yeah. With a better weight rate. Exactly, yeah. And cheaper. <laughs> Yeah, that's the idea. Not possible. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see it. <laughs> I consider the best anchor. I'm going to test it against all other anchors. Uh -huh. And only if it is really better than all the other anchors, scientifically proven to be better, then OK. Yeah. Let's make a test <laughs> uh, of your anchor. Because okay. I care it is on the final stage with the development. Let's make a, a, a good video about it. If you want, we can make a we can compare it with uh, Rockna and Delta because I have yeah. it in my boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, but do you have, I try to make uh, full-size tests. You know, most people do tests with like small anchors. 
We can uh, uh, you have use full a size. full size body yeah, exactly. for a test, no problem. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. What I have, I'm going to do it with a load cell, so you can record the data. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, great. And um, I would, anchors I have, I have the Rockner, I have the Mantos, I have the CQR, I have the Bugle Anchor. I'm talking about anchors which are not of mine to compare, right? Uh -huh, I can, I have You have the Delta, right? Yes. Exactly. So this is basically the main anchors. You can compare against all the main anchors and see if it performs better. Let's do it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can yeah. you show me your anchor? Sure, man. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, so here we got, you can see I've got a whole collection of anchors. And uh, usually when people see this, they think that I'm extremely paranoid. And uh, that <laughs> I think there's a hurricane coming any minute. Because they see I've got 10 anchors on the front here. It looks like <laughs> um, This here is the original Bugle Anchor. This was developed in 1983. And patented. So it's, uh, just its original one. This is the original one, yeah. And uh, this was, as I say, this was developed 1983 by Rolf Katschirek. It was patented in Germany. You can still find the patent online. Uh -huh. And this is the original roll bar anchor. Every anchor you see that has a roll bar yeah. is a copy of this one, including the Rockner, including the Manson Supreme, including the Mantis. All these anchors are copies of this original one. And mine as well. Mine is also a copy of this original one. Uh -huh. So, um, what we're trying to do is improve upon the original design. The shank, yeah, there's a lot of difference in it. For example, um, you can see the shank is continuously curved. Yes. It has a continuous curve in it. And this is designed uh, with finite element analysis. So we do computer design to maximize the, uh, the strength of the geometry. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes, yes. Well, if you look at, for example, the rock, now it has a lot of corners in it, right? It has a hole here and you have it makes it weaker, right? Uh huh. Yeah. Or this the original design too. It is not optimized. The the, the strength of the metal. Straight one. And that's it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, why do you use these teeth? The teeth. Yeah. <laughs> this is actually uh, right now. I, I do also modeling and how how it penetrates the ground in very hard grounds. Uh huh. So you can see some don't have it. Here you have four prototypes. They're all slightly different. Uh, this one is smooth. This one is serrated. This one is smooth. This one is serrated. So I'm doing, I've done computer simulations on these, uh -huh. and I'm now going to test in the in the real world whether these tooth actually increase the performance of the anchor. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, so I'm going to have a load cell. Yeah. I've done what I've done comparative testing right now is what I do, I put two anchors out, I put a pulley between the two and I pull on the pulley. So what happens then is the yeah, anchor with the least performance the will end up drag. on the pulley, start yes, the drag, yes, exactly. exactly yeah. So this is a very precise way to compare anchors. Because, you, you know, as I say, like, you anchor here, it works well, you anchor over there, it doesn't. Yeah, Why? Yes, exactly. Because maybe there's a patch of, of grass, and maybe there's sand. The, the bottom of the ocean the changes. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So, if you do anchor test, you throw the anchor in, you pull, this one works. Then you throw the other one, oh, this one didn't work. They're not always that scientific. So, the method with the roller is, is very precise, because you go you with the diver, in one place. you put it in the same conditions, the two anchors, and then you have the same amount of pull on both, and this is quite a fair way of comparing the anchors, I think. You, you shouldn't say rock me, you should say the competitor. <laughs> okay. We will not tell any brands. Brand number one. You're giving them free publicity here, this is not good. Nobody knows about what does it mean, this shape. <laughs> Especially for, from a sailor. Exactly. People who never put any anchor on you in their don't, don't, don't say the R word. <laughs> Давайте сделаем с вами следующее. Вы можете писать комментарии, и комментарии, которые у нас будут под видео, мы сделаем розыгрыш и разыграем вот такую крутую книжку Эрика с его подписью. И вот здесь будет подпись, и книжка будет у вас, которая приедет к вам прямо из Панамы. Так вот, что нужно сделать? Пишите комменты, задавайте вопросы. Uh -huh. И мы можем сделать еще одно видео, в котором эти вопросы мы зададим и дадим на них ответы. Эрик расскажет про, собственно, про то, что вы будете спрашивать. Давайте. Uh -huh. But then you also have to come to Panama. If you get the book, you have to come to Panama. <laughs> With the sailing boat, of course. <laughs> yeah. What's the reason of cruising guide if you are not in the Panama? Yeah. yeah, it doesn't matter if you come in five years, but you should come eventually, because it's a very special place, I think, for everybody. <laughs> okay, bye bye. <laughs> yeah. So this one here is uh, gonna be the 
through the guide for YouTube. Yeah. You, uh, answer the questions, whatever these questions are. I don't know what they're gonna be. Then you're gonna get a free cruising guide. It's very special, by the way.